I am here to give you all the big sister advice that you never knew you needed. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kelly Tang. I like to make YouTube videos at 2 a.m. about whatever I want. And today we're gonna to be talking about sororities. Okay, so if you clicked into this video, you're probably an incoming freshman or an underclassman who is interested in learning more about Rush, specifically Rush at UAUC and Asian sororities. So if you're an incoming freshman, first of all, congratulations on getting into U of I. You're gonna have a great time here. And also congratulations on not having to do online school. I love YouTube because it's such a great resource. You can learn about pretty much anything on here, but there are barely any videos out there about rushing at UAUC. And to my knowledge, not a single one about rushing Asian sororities. So that is about to change today. I am here to give you all the big sister advice that you never knew you needed. I know it's only the beginning of July and technically school slash rush doesn't start until mid-August, but trust me, it's never too early to start thinking about rush and I just want you to be as prepared as possible. So my rush experience happened first semester freshman year. I started out doing formal recruitment. I ended up dropping that and I joined an Asian sorority in the fall of 2016. And I've been very involved with it for all four years of my college career. I served as vice president of internal affairs. I was president of the United Degree Council. Also rush chair for two years and publicity chair for four years and I was also on our dance team even though I'm really bad at dancing okay so there is a lot of information to get through in this video so buckle in I mean you already clicked into this video seeing how long it was so Thank you. But since this is a really long video, I'm gonna leave timestamps down below so you can kind of skip around to the parts that you need to. Also, I apologize if I talk really fast. I can't help it. I'm really trying not to, but I will try for you. Rush and joining a sorority can be a lot to take in. When I was a freshman, I had so many unanswered questions and I just had to figure it out by myself. So back then, I wish someone had made a video like this that could explain everything to me and let me know exactly what I'm getting myself into. I just wanna tell you as much information as possible so you are completely informed, completely prepared for when Rush happens. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about my personal Rush experience, whether or not I think you should brush, what Greek life is like at UAUC, the difference between panel-like sororities and Asian sororities, and then why I chose to join an Asian sorority, bakes and littles, hazing, what the intake process is like, how to choose between the different Asian sororities on campus, and most importantly, my tips for rushing so you can get into the sorority that you want. Okay, so I just want to preface this video by saying I'm not going to be comparing different sororities to one another. Everyone's sorority experience is going to be different, so I can't speak on anyone else's experience. I want to make it clear that I'm only speaking on mine. Everything I'm going to tell you today is what I've gathered from my own experience of being part of Greek life at UAUC, but I also do realize that Greek life is very different at UAUC compared to like literally any other university. However, I was very, very involved with it for the past four years, and and because of that, I have a lot to say about this topic and everything I'm going to say is just anything that I would tell my younger friend who is interested in rushing. At the end of the day, I really don't care what school you go to, which sorority you choose to join, whether or not you choose to rush at all. The quality of your college experience is in my opinion, like 95% gonna be determined by the community that you choose to join. The best part about college is that you're free for the first time, you know, you, you can choose exactly how you wanna spend your time and the people that you wanna surround yourself with. So this is a really golden opportunity and you need to make the most of it. You need to find a community of people to belong to that you can not only have very like close, open, trusting relationships with, but also people that inspire you and build you up and actually shape you to become the best version of yourself. Because you came to college to grow, you came here to learn, get your degree, but also you came here because you wanna be become a better person, right? And in my opinion, I feel like the best way to do that is to find the right friends. This is the message and my overall vision that I was so passionate about when I was president of the United Greek Council and also the reason why I did recruitment chair for four semesters. I'm really, really passionate about helping you find where you belong. And now here I am on YouTube trying to do my best to do what I can to help you find that too. The reason why I love UIUC is that it's such a big campus. There's hundreds of clubs for you to join. There's so many ways for you to get involved here. It's a college town, so it's really, really easy to meet new people. And I promise you, there is a place on campus for you. There is a place here where you 120% belong and that you're just gonna fall in love with. I don't care where that place is, but I know that you can find it and I really wanna help you find that place. Okay, welcome to Greek Life 101 at UAUC. Wow, I feel like I'm a teacher. <clears throat> Welcome to class, kids. So UAUC has a really, really big Greek life. Last time I checked, we had 91 fraternities and sororities, which is a lot. So each Greek organization is separated into four different councils. There's IFC, the Interpreterity Council, PHC, the Panhellenic Council, UGC, the United Greek Council, and BGC, the Black Greek Council. So IFC is made up of about 40 fraternities. PHC is made up of around 25 sororities. UGC is made up of around 25 fraternities and sororities. So this is the council that has all the culturally based organizations. There's Asian, Latino, South Asian, multicultural, and the BGC is made up of around 10 orgs, and that is all the black fraternities and sororities. I'm not 100% sure on the exact number, so don't quote me on that, but that's just to give you an idea. So my average experience was between PHC and UGC. So 
So what's the difference between these two councils? PHC is a council that holds formal recruitment. So when you hear about rushing sororities at UAUC, this is probably the one that you've heard of. It's the one where you register online, you pay a $50 something fee, you get to visit all the houses, and over the course of a couple weeks, you gradually narrow down the ones that you're interested in, and then at the end, you receive your bid on bid day, and then yay, congratulations. What's different about how Rush works in UGC is that all the organizations in UGC hold their own individual Rush. Each org is in charge of deciding when they want to do Rush, what events they want to host, and how many they want to host. Each org is going to have a different system on how they want that to work. From what I've seen, most orgs will hold around two to three weeks worth of events. There's going to be a few info nights or informationals there. And then at the end, before they give up bids, each individual does a professional or business interview. So there are actually a few sororities in PHC who kind of do a similar thing where they hold their own Rush. They're not part of formal recruitment. And I'm not exactly sure how they run their events, but I imagine it's kind of similar where they have their own system and their own schedule and you're free to go to these events as you choose. So I actually really like the whole individual Rush system because you get to choose exactly where you want to spend your time. For a formal recruitment, every single event, every time you go visit houses, and each day of rush is mandatory. But when it comes to um, individual rushes, rush is not obligatory, so you can go to whichever events you want to. You can rush multiple sororities at once. It's also free, with so, you know, I like that. It, it's just completely custom tailored. And now, being on the other side, as recruitment chair, we get to, you know, choose all the rush themes, design all the posters. We brainstorm, like, different kinds of events that we can do each semester. We design the rush shirts. There's a lot of creative liberty in what we want to do, and it's just a lot of fun. Also, one of the main differences between most of the PHC sororities and UGC is that once you get your bid, you're not immediately part of the sisterhood. You actually are going to go through some kind of intake process. For my sorority, we call it the new member process. When you're in this process, it's confidential, so you're not allowed to tell anybody that you're a part of this process until you have your reveal at the end. The reveal is kind of the special showcase or presentation of everything that you've learned and you get to reveal yourself to the Greek community. And then from that point on, you can be officially and publicly part of the sisterhood. The next difference, of course, is obviously the cultural aspect. All UGC fraternities and sororities have some kind of cultural identification. Also, a part that's really fun is that we all get nicknames. So when you join the sisterhood, you're going to be given a nickname and that's going to be very special and meaningful to you. We all wear line jackets, which has our nickname and our line number on the back and it has our classes. Here, I can go show you mine right now. So this is my line jacket. Sorry, it's like kind of dirty after all these years of wearing it, but it has my nickname and number on the back, which is Uzi124. On the side, it says UAUC Upsilon Chapter. On the other sleeve, it says Alpha Gamma Graphites Fall 2016. So yeah, I also forgot to mention your class is also gonna get a name that is representative of your line. So this is something that we'll all wear to you know certain types of events. I don't have one, but a lot of sisters also have a black line jacket and that's custom made and given to them as a gift from their big bro usually. That's something that I'll talk about later in this video as well. Okay, so what is the rush process like? Like I said before, each sorority holds their own individual rush. Normally that's around two to three weeks. You won't have to pay any kind of fee to rush. You don't have to register or sign up anywhere. It is completely up to you which rush events you want to go to. You can show up or not show up to whichever events you want. You can start rushing or stop rushing whenever you want. You can rush as many or as little sororities as you want. And then at the end, you're going to do a professional interview that's probably around 10 to 20 minutes. After that, the sorority will give out their bids. You can choose whether to accept or deny, and then congratulations. It's really very simple. Okay, so let me tell you about my rush experience. So like I said, I started out doing formal recruitment actually. The only reason I signed up for formal recruitment is because my roommate was doing it. Like I grew up in a very like white town. It seemed like everyone else was doing it and everyone was telling me to sign up. So I was like, okay, I guess I will. So yeah, I registered online. At the beginning of the year, I went to orientation and that was held in Follinger. So that's like the big auditorium on campus. And there was hundreds of girls there. It was completely packed. Um, we listened to an alum speak. And after that, we were separated into like breakout rooms where we received a big blue tote bag. And this tote bag was filled with all the stuff that we're going to need for the next few weeks. So there was an informational handbook in there of all the different sororities and what the rush process is going to look like. They gave us an umbrella, hand sanitizer, um, a t-shirt that we're supposed to wear when we're visiting houses, stuff like that. I remember very distinctly when I was there, like they told us they were, I don't remember the exact number, but say there was like a thousand some girls who were rushing. And I guess there's only a certain number of available slots per se. I think there might be like a maximum of how much each sorority can take in. So basically when I did the math, that meant that there were 400 girls in that room that were not gonna get a bid at all. First of all, that really scared me because I was like, damn, I'm probably gonna be one of those 400 bitches that don't make it. And I also just felt really bad for those people because they're gonna go through all this work of going through recruitment just to get rejected at the end. At bid day, it happens on the quad. It's very public, you can see what happens and everyone's like screaming and so happy and crying and then there are some girls that go home rejected and <laughs> my heart. At the same time, there's also a lot of girls who actually drop before the process is even over so they don't even have to go through the rejection part, which was me. 
Okay, so going back to the first day of recruitment, before I went to orientation, I wanted to do some research because I'm like, okay, well, I guess I should know what I'm getting myself into or like kind of know where I would be interested in going. I was searching around on Facebook and then I ended up finding the sorority that I'm currently in, which is an Asian sorority called Alpha Kappa Delta Phi. I was like, damn, they look dope. These girls are so cute. I can't wait to meet them. And then when I got to orientation, I was flipping through the book and they weren't in it. And I was so confused. I thought that formal recruitment actually included all the sororities. I didn't know there was any other type of rush, but Boy, was I wrong. That night, I messaged on Facebook to the UIUC AKD5 Facebook page and, oh my god, just let me read this to you. Okay, here it is. September 1st, 2016. Oh my god. Hi, I was interested in Russian 85, but I just went to recruitment orientation and you weren't on the list of sororities. I was just wondering where that was and if there's a different process I had to go through. It seems like you guys have a separate Russian process, but would it be too late to join at that point? And how would it work if I also want to check out other sororities through the official Russian program? Sorry for all the questions. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh god, I hate myself. <laughs> so, I guess to make a long story short, I dropped out of Panhell Rush pretty quickly. I guess the reason for that was, and it, it took me meeting the sisters of AK-85 first for me to really realize this, but it felt very reminiscent of high school to me, and I did not have a good time in high school, <laughs> okay? I guess high school, and even before that, I was always just very on edge. I was always very worried about fitting in and how I should be acting, and if what I'm saying or doing is cool enough, and what I'm supposed to be wearing. I grew up in a very white town, and I was consistently embarrassed if, you know, white people are talking about something that I didn't know about and I would either pretend to know what they're talking about or I would even just go and like do my own research and try and figure it out. But at the same time, it was never quite the same because I didn't get it. I was only pretending to. Just in the same way that they can learn a lot about my culture, they, they can learn about how what it was like to grow up Asian, but it will never be the same because they just don't get it. Like they didn't have the same experiences as me. And that is a big reason of why I chose to do Asian Greek. I feel like when I was younger, I used to value fitting in way more than anything else. Like I valued fitting in more than I valued my own happiness. Looking back, oh my God, I cannot believe I was genuinely embarrassed. Like when I was in elementary school, I was genuinely embarrassed that I did not know how to like eat a hot dog or like how to dress it or whatever because I had never seen this before and first of all I didn't understand why white people even like this because hot dog is literally the most disgusting thing like okay whatever when I was at the lunch table the kids would make fun of me for the Chinese food that I would bring the first time that happened it really confused me I, it made me upset because I liked this food but it seemed like no one else did I think I always grew up with the assumption that everyone else is right and therefore my own opinions are not really valid so I wanted to stop bringing that stuff and I just wanted to eat some normal food like I would ask my parents like can you just please make me a peanut butter jelly sandwich you know <laughs> every single time that I was made fun of for being Asian when I was a kid I remember those moments so vividly. Like I barely even remember anything else from elementary school. But even today, I remember exactly what my classmates said to me and those moments I remember like it was yesterday. Those kind of things led me to be a very quiet and shy and reserved person when I was growing up. And when I'm very clearly not a quiet, shy, reserved person, you know what I'm saying? I would constantly be putting in a 100% effort just for the sake of blending in. Like I'm not even trying to be better than anybody else. Like, I just really would do anything just to fit in, which is not a way to live, let me tell you. So I guess the environment of just how I felt the formal recruitment really sucked me back into that place and I knew that I just felt that overwhelming feeling of what can I do and what can I say to make people like me and I thought I was looking for my home away from home you know I'm not saying people were judging me at Panalytic Rush I felt like they were but I can't be sure but I guess some of that could have been attributed to the negative associations I had with racism and bullying and microaggressions that I experienced growing up however since then I have talked to a bunch of other minorities who did try Panalytic Rush and ended up going with UGC instead and a lot of these people actually made it way further in the process than I did from what I can tell we kind of shared a similar experience like no one was outwardly racist or said anything really mean to their faces but they certainly did not feel welcome and you could tell that they were treated differently than other people it's just a place that we just knew that we weren't going to fit in and please don't take any of this as me like talking bad about PHC or the formal recruitment process because I'm not again I'm just sharing from my own experience and I know that you know most people who do it are really super happy there and just in the same way that I was super happy when I found my sorority and that's exactly what I want for you as well I want you to be super happy in whichever sorority you choose to join so after I messaged the Katie Facebook page I ended up meeting with a sister for lunch and she answered my million questions that night I went to my first rush event and it was funny because it was actually their invite only event so when I showed up to this event like the sisters in their head were like who does bitch the event was held in an apartment that a few sisters were living at at the time we were doing makeup doing our nails talking and getting ready for a party to go to that night me personally I did not make it to the party because I got food poisoning but I did make it to their final rush event and there I signed up for my interview and the rest is history basically as quickly as I realized that Panhelp is not for me, I just as quickly realized that AKD5 was. When I went to those rush events, I actually felt like I could be myself. Not only were the sisters I met so nice and welcoming, I felt like they just got me and I didn't feel like I was being judged. So if you're deciding between whether or not you should do Panhel or Asian, my advice to you is to just try both. Yes, if you do drop out of Panhel, you're gonna lose some money, like those are $50 I'm never gonna get back, but 
I think it's fine. I th honestly think it was worth it because going through the process and finding out that Katie Fire was for me is worth way more than $50 in my opinion. I think it is worth it for you to rush around and find your best fit because once you join, you're in it for life, girl. So just to be clear, pretty much from this point on, when I talk about sororities, I'm talking about Asian sororities. Okay, so the next question is, should I rush? Is rushing and Greek life for me? My take on this is, even if you don't really think you're interested, you should rush. There's also different kinds of fraternities and sororities you can rush. There's social, business, professional, service. This is a really great opportunity for you to make new friends and network. And this is especially true at the beginning of the year when everyone's kind of in that mindset when they're like looking to meet new people. And I think you might be pleasantly surprised. I would say that maybe 50% of my sisters had never intended on joining a sorority in the first place, but now they say that it's one of the best decisions that they made in college. So even if you don't end up rushing or joining, this is the time to start socializing with a lot of different people People that you've never met before so if you didn't really do that before college now is the time like I said I'm mostly just concerned that you are gonna find that place on campus where you feel like you belong I personally think that Greek life is a really great place to do that Greek life is just a really easy way for you to find a lot of friends who all are very kind of similar or like-minded to you who are all friends with each other <laughs> plus those people are just gonna keep introducing you to people who you are also likely to have lots of things in common with each semester you're gonna have a hand in recruiting the next class so your friend group only keeps growing and then you're gonna have friends who are of all different ages which is a really good way to stay connected on campus. Okay, so what are my tips on rushing? I've been a part of seven different rushes and I was a recruitment chair for four semesters, so you can take my advice here. My first tip is to hang out with sisters outside of rush events. You can ask them to go get boba or try out a restaurant on campus with you. Just get to know them on a more personal level. When I first joined, Greek life was a lot much more smaller and more intimate. Back then we had a lot fewer sisters and also a lot fewer rushies. So back then hanging out with sisters outside of rush events was maybe not as necessary, but I think it really is now since we've really grown. So now we have over 40 actives and around 40 to 50 rushies coming to each of these events. We also only host around eight or nine events. So if you do the math here, there's absolutely no way that each sister would be able to get to know each rushie well enough to be able to know if we should let them into this organization. Going off of that, make sure to get to know as many sisters as possible. I think it's very easy, especially if you're on the quieter side to get very comfortable and just stick to those same like two or three sisters who were really nice to you at the beginning of rush but really really make an effort to reach out and branch out to everybody especially because like I said at this point it's almost getting kind of competitive with how many girls there are I would say a good rule of thumb is maybe try to introduce yourself or at least meet every single one of the sisters by maybe the end of the first week that way by the second week of rush everyone already knows you and then you can work on getting to know them on a deeper level and then my biggest tip is to just be yourself I know this sounds really cliche but seriously Please do not go out and like buy different clothes or try and say things or do things that you think are gonna impress us. I can assure you, as someone who's been through seven different rushes, 99% of the time we can see through that. And if you think about it, it's not good for you either. Like. Why would you even want to be part of a group that only accepted you because you were pretending to be like somebody else? You're not going to be happy in the long run and you're going to end up committing to a sorority that is not actually your right fit and you're really, really going to regret that because like I said, like once you're in it, you're in it for life. Also, my last tip is to consider rushing in the spring. I mean, obviously fall class, best class, but I say this because personally, I had a lot of trouble adjusting to college. I didn't kind of get over that after the first few weeks, but I do really wish I had more time to just settle into campus, figure out where I am and what I'm doing. I'm also very bad with directions, so I would be getting lost all the time and that's not fun. Also just to meet more friends outside of Greek Club as well. So if you do go to Rush and kind of feel like you're not quite ready, it's okay. Like the sorority's still gonna be there. We all hold Rush every fall and every spring, so there's really no harm in waiting. However, at the same time, I am really glad that I did Rush and Fall because, okay, <laughs> this game is not really cheesy, but like once I joined, I found out these are people that I really wanna spend a lot of time with. So I'm glad that I even had just that one extra semester to just be with my friends. So. If you do choose to wait a semester to rush, I would still suggest going to the fall rush events because there's really nothing for you to lose. Since it's during syllabus week, you're not gonna be that busy. You're gonna have time to go to these rush events. All you're gonna get is you know free food, free invites to parties. You can start getting to know the sisters. You can become familiar with how rush works. And those are things that are gonna be a big advantage to you when you do actually rush. Okay, so let's talk about why I chose to join an Asian sorority and some of the benefits. So for me, the biggest benefit is that it's more close knit. It's a lot smaller than the Panhellenic sororities. So I feel like I get to know everyone a lot better. My intake class was only five people people now we range somewhere around maybe 8 to 12 girls and for panel like sororities it's not uncommon for their intake classes to be like closer to like 50 people. But because of this, I feel like I get to know everyone a lot better. I know every single sister pretty well, and I've hung out with every sister outside of sorority events at least once. The next benefit is that the dues are a lot cheaper. So dues for AKD5 are around $200, 220 max. Somehow since I've joined, the dues have actually gotten less and less each year. So honestly, shout out to our VP Finance. I can't speak for panel sororities because I don't actually know, but I know that a lot of them can get closer to like the 1K range, and that's like, 
So a big reason why our dues are a lot cheaper is because we do not have an official sorority house. Instead, we hold our events at, you know, university buildings or different sisters' apartments. Sisters really like to live with each other, so there's always a few apartments that we can kind of go to for sisterhood events or whatever we're doing that day. Panhouse sororities have official sorority houses. So those are like registered with the university, which means that I think you can move into them freshman year, I think? I'm not totally sure. UGC orgs, to my knowledge, not a single one of them have houses that are registered with the university. Most fraternities will have a house, but it's like unofficial, so it's just like a lot of bros just happen to live there and that's where they'll throw their parties and whatever. I don't believe any UGC sororities have a house, even an unofficial one. And obviously a big reason why I chose an Asian sorority is for the cultural aspect. Before I came to college, I was very whitewashed, all my friends were very whitewashed. I didn't know a lot of things about Asian culture, nor did I want to know a lot of things. Growing up, my Chinese side was one that I was always trying to suppress. I'm originally from a very white town and I grew up wishing that I was white or basically wishing to be someone that I'm not and I think that greatly contributed to a lot of my confidence issues growing up. Joining an Asian sorority, I was really finally able to get in touch with my Asian side and I got to meet friends who actually love being Asian. I know it sounds stupid but it was actually mind-blowing to me to, to meet people who are actually so into their own culture and because of that I finally felt proud to be Asian for the first time ever and I learned a lot more about Asian culture through them and then when I went back to my family I asked them to teach me more about Asian culture and I really appreciated that side of me so much more. Okay, let's talk about some frequently asked questions. So the first one, no, you do not need to be Asian to join. That's why we're technically categorized as an Asian interest sorority, not Asian. Okay, so bigs and littles. Bigs and littles are one of the funnest parts about being part of a sorority. When you join, everyone gets a big. Everyone also gets a mom and you get your line sisters, which are the people that join in the same semester as you. And those are the people that you're going to get to be really, really, really close with. After you join, if you want to, you can pick up a little or two or three like I did. A big and little relationship is a really special one. It's really unique and not like any other kind of relationship that you're going to find in college. I take my big little relationships very very seriously like when I chose to pick up my littles I chose them with the intent that these are girls that I'm gonna be friends with literally till the rest of my life my big spoiled the frick out of me and I enjoy spoiling the frick out of my littles I hinted at this before but you also have the opportunity to get a big bro or a little bro you can get picked up by a bro in any of the Asian fraternities and it doesn't even have to be at this school and the same thing applies for little bros as well so as you can see on top of just joining the group community in general there are a lot of opportunities for you to you know kind of build your own little family here on campus and there's actually way more than that too like there's aunties and gamas and nieces and th I'm not even gonna get into any of that stuff because I don't have the time and those are things you're gonna learn about in the new book process. Okay, so let's talk about hazing. Girl, I was so scared of hazing. I was terrified of getting hazed. My favorite thing to do was to go on Google and Google hazing horror stories just to be prepared for anything that might happen to me. So this is definitely something I was very, very concerned about when I was rushing. That's why I was so damn relieved when I did start the intake process and found out that I was not gonna be hazed. <sighs> Thank God. UIUC, we have a very, very strict non-hazing policy. Honestly, you should look up the different hazing stories and things that have happened around the world. It's very harmful and in too many cases, unfortunately, it's even led to death. I do encourage you to look into it and learn about it because I think it's an important issue to be aware of. And by that, I don't mean those stupid rumors you read about on random online forums. I'm talking about this stuff. But if chapters are caught hazing, you can be suspended, you can get in trouble with the university, the police can get involved, and your national board can also you up. So hazing as an issue, it has definitely gotten better. Unfortunately, I know that does still happen at UAUC in some organizations. I don't even know exactly which ones, but I know that it's not perfect. Okay, I forgot to mention this, but if you do enter an organization that hazes, I would really suggest you just remove yourself from the situation. I think hazing is stupid and it serves no real purpose. There is a much better way to teach members and uphold your history that doesn't involve harming others or belittling them just to have the right to be your friend. It can be really scary and there's a lot of pressure to just stick it through, but if you ever feel like you're being asked to do something that you're not comfortable with, no one is forcing you and you can find a better community with people who have better morals and values than that. That is all. Please be safe. Know your worth. So I can't speak on any other orgs, but I do know for a fact that my sorority AK5 does not haze. Instead, what you go through is an intake program, which is called the new member process, and that is one that is standardized internationally. So basically what that means is every single person who joins this sorority around the world, no matter where that is at any school, is going to go through the exact same process step by step. So that's how you know that it's safe, it's for your benefit, it's for your learning. This is developed specifically for you to really, really get to know the sisters, get to know the history, and really bond with one another. It's also kind of cool because now you have that shared experience. So whether it's a sister who joined 10 years before you or 10 years after you, or if it's a sister to another school or another country, no matter what, you're going to have that shared experience. And it's kind of something that you can bond over. I know this sounds kind of like culty or whatever, but I often feel that when I meet sisters, even when I'm meeting for them for the first time, I feel like we have that like instantaneous connection where you just kind of understand each other, which I know sounds kind of weird, but you, you would understand if you experience it yourself. Okay, so this intake process. What is a new member process like? So this is just a time for you to really get close 
close to everybody. You're gonna learn everything that you need to know about the sorority's history. You're gonna get to know literally every single sister. We like to equate it to a three hour credit class, so just be prepared. That's just to help you kind of gauge how much time you're gonna be spending in this process. So it can definitely get busy if you don't space out your time right. I think a lot of freshmen come in from high school thinking that they're very good at time management, but they're really not, and that was me. If it's a struggle for you time-wise, I think that's just a sign that you're not good at time management. So either way, it's a really important skill for you to learn. I learned more about time management and responsibility from this process than I did from any other part of college, to be honest. Okay, so if you rush and you get rejected, can I rush twice? Should I rush twice? And the answer is yes, you should. We actually do have a lot of sisters who rush twice. The reason we rejected them the first time is not because we don't like them. There are actually a lot of factors as to why people aren't given a bid. Sometimes we're just not ready for you the first semester, but then the next semester, it's a perfect fit. So don't feel bad and don't feel discouraged. It actually shows a lot of courage and humility to come back even after having that hurtful feeling of rejection. And we recognize that. So I actually really highly encourage you to try again if you really do believe that this sorority is what you're looking for. At the same time, if you rush all the sororities and you don't really feel that way about any of them, I would say like don't feel bad and don't try to force it. You can also look into rushing business or professional or service attorneys. There's also lots of Asian clubs on campus. There's like AAA, the Asian American Association. There's TAS, the Taiwanese club. There's PSA and VSA and KSA and th there's actually so many. Like if you don't feel like you exactly fit into Greek life, don't feel like you have to force it. There's lots of other options for you to join as well. And lastly, how many bids do you give out? There is no set number or range or quota that sororities are looking for. The way we do it is that we just examine each individual. If we think that this person would have a bright future in a sorority, if we think that they could grow a lot as a person from joining us, but also be able to contribute a lot back to the chapter in the future, if we think that you fit into our sisterhood and you get along with us really well, we think you'd be a great addition to the chapter, then that's how you're gonna get a bid. However many that ends up being is gonna be how many that is for that semester. So who gets in has nothing to do with numbers. Okay, so let's talk about which Asian sorority you should join. So at UAUC, we're lucky to have four different Asian sororities, so there's a lot of different options for you to choose from. There's the one that I'm in, which is Alpha Kappa Delta Phi. There's also Kappa Phi Lambda, Alpha Phi Gamma, and Sigma Psi Zeta. But like I said earlier, everyone's sorority experience is different, so I can't speak on anyone else's experience. Everyone is gonna find a sorority that they feel most at home with. And for that reason, you should be rushing multiple sororities. So my personal advice of what I would do is first go to quad day and visit the four different booths. Honestly, because of the pandemic, I don't know if you're gonna have a quad day for fall 2020, but if there is, or if there's some kind of substitute for that, I would make sure to check out each one and kind of get a sense of what they're like, who their sisters are, and then find out the information for each sorority's rush. So since rush is two weeks, I would spend the first week kind of checking out the four different sororities. I would go to at least one event for each sorority and if possible, an info night or an informational night. I think that after a few rush events, you're gonna kind of get a sense of what the vibe is at each of these different sororities. And if you do find one that is your vibe, my personal advice is just pick that one and then seriously rush that one. Of course, what you can do is, you know, rush all of them and interview for all four of them and just see which one you get a bid at and then pick from those bids. Doing that is a lot closer to the kind of system that formal recruitment does. But naturally, Asian sorority rush works a little differently because there's only four of us and we each hold our own individual rushes. So by the end of those two or three weeks, I think you should kind of have an idea of which one you want to go for, even by the end of the first week. So what I would personally do is just pick one and then really focus on that one. For me, I didn't get to do that because I found out about Asian sororities like pretty much at the very last minute. I was only able to go to like one and a half rush events. It didn't really matter for me though because when I went to my first rush event, Within the first like 20 minutes, no lie, I knew that AKD5 was gonna be my home. But if you don't have that strong feeling of conviction, I guess, about that one sorority right away, then you should really explore your options. You should keep rushing the different sororities until you find that fit. So the reason why I chose to join AKD5 we're the first, largest, and only international Asian interest sorority. So basically what that means, if you break it down, we're the biggest one, so we have over 6,000 sisters. We're the oldest sorority at UAUC, and we're also the only sorority that has chapters outside of the United States as well. So basically the implications of all of that is we have more sisters. We have a very well-established national board. We have a longer history, so that just means more resources for you at the end of the day. That's more sisters for you to network with, bigger conferences and conventions each year, and just having a bigger voice in general. But honestly, these are all benefits that I learned about after I joined. I never actually had the chance to to an info night. When I was rushing, I didn't know about any of this stuff at all. When I was a freshie, I chose AKD5 because I just knew. The sisters I met during Rush were some of the most welcoming, kind-hearted, and giving people that I had met in a really long time. I was so inspired by their kindness and their accomplishments, their work ethic, and most of all, their undeniable friendship with one another. Like, I, I could tell that it wasn't fake. I think my fear of rushing or joining a sorority is that everyone's fake or you have to be fake to fit in, but I just knew, like, you could tell that these connections were very genuine. These people weren't fake at all. Just being in this environment and seeing them interact with one another, like, I just knew I wanted to be part of 
this so bad. We're also the only sorority here that has a brother fraternity, which is Lambda Phi Epsilon. Basically, that means that we're especially close to one another. We celebrate each other's birthdays or our founders' days. And at the end of the day, that just means more connections and more friends for you. And yes, I know what you're thinking. In case you're wondering, a lot of Kitty Phi's and Lambdas do date. I date a Lambda. If I think about it, I think like 50% of my lineage is dating a Lambda. Like my big, my G big, two of my littles. But anyways, don't just take it from me. What I think is really cool is that we have this hashtag, hashtag YAKDFI. If you go on Instagram and look at the hashtag, you can read about other sisters' experience about why they chose to join from all over the world. If you're interested in rushing in the semester of fall of 2020, I'll drop a link in the description of our rush interest form, which is gonna be your first step in getting started in the process of rush. Okay, so what is Greek life itself like? What can you expect after you join? So after you finish the intake process and besides the reveal itself, becoming an active sister and publicly being part of the sisterhood, that's when the real fun begins. I feel like a question that a lot of people ask about Greek life is like, what do you guys actually do? And I feel like the best way for me to explain it is that it's a mix of everything. You literally do everything. You have service events, fundraisers, socials, formals and banquets. We have cultural events, we have a dance team. Obviously we do recruitment every semester. We have national conferences, Midwest conferences. And the best part is you get to do all of it with your best friends. And because of that, like work doesn't really feel like work. When we're prepping for a fundraiser or we're at a volunteering event, it doesn't feel like I'm doing any kind of work because I'm just, it, it honestly just feels like I'm hanging out with my friends. So each organization is gonna have some kind of pillars or basically core values that you stand by. For my sorority, we have five different pillars. There is sisterhood, scholarship, leadership, service, and Asian awareness. So I'll just do a quick little run through of what each of those five pillars mean. So sisterhood is obvious. You're gonna find friendship in all of the sisters. No matter when you joined or what class you're a part of, I think what's so amazing is how close we all are with each other. What I really love about my sisters is we like to embody work hard, play hard. That is our motto. Like all of my sisters are so inspiring. Like I look up to them, even if they're younger than me. These are all very hardworking and successful individuals who have made incredible achievements. But the best part at the same time, we know how to have fun. Remember, you were the average of your your closest friends. So you should choose to surround yourself by people who have very good values, who are very driven and successful, and most importantly, fun. Find as many of those kinds of people as you can. And I say fun because I think that can be a very underrated trait that some people overlook. Like we can be as equally goofy and fun and weird with each other as much as we know how to get down to business and get shit done. So it's very important to find a very healthy mix of both of those things. Just in general, when you join the Greek community, be prepared to meet a lot of people, especially your first year in joining. You are going to feel more extroverted than you ever have in your entire life. I am a very introverted person. I am now and I always was growing up, but somehow during my freshman year, when I took the Myers-Briggs personality test, I got like a ENFJ, but is it ENFJ? Looking back, that is so funny because like, there's absolutely no way I'm so introverted, but I really felt like I was. When you are joining your sorority, you are not just joining your sorority. Yes, now you're gonna have that group of maybe 20, 30, 40 sisters to be with on campus. You're also gonna meet a lot of the alums, so sisters who graduated before you. You're gonna meet sisters at different schools. You're gonna meet people in the other fraternities and the other sororities. We also do collabs with a lot of different Asian clubs on campus. You're gonna meet people through there too. The whole Asian community, so just be ready for that. If you were awkward in high school like me, your social skills are really be tested. Also, prepare to get spoiled, okay? I was actually really surprised when I first joined, not only by how much like love and gifts that I was showered with, but also just how much continuous support we received from our sisters. Like, I love how we're always just hyping each other up or like giving each other compliments and calling you out for your achievements. We nominate each other for awards and even little small things. So like when Joanna or Tasha invites me over for dinner and they cook me a really amazing meal and we watch a movie. When Michelle will randomly show up my door with homemade baked goods for me to try. Sometimes a sister will randomly treat us all out to boba or bring me a box of my favorite wine. I've also been given the most elaborate birthday surprises of my life. Each year they surprise me for my birthday and they somehow keep topping it every single year, like to the point that I'm moved to tears. When my bake was here on campus, she would always randomly give me these huge care packages of the best snacks and goodies. And even after now that she's graduated and living in Chicago, she still randomly sends me presents to my door. Like what? It's just that type of love and energy that just keeps feeding off of one another and it's inspiring. Anyways, our next pillar is scholarship. So we always like to remind our sisters that you are here for school first. You're not here to be part of this club. So we don't want this to like eat up too much of your time or feel like you have too much responsibility when you are here to study and get your degree. So that's why we created a study bank. So that's basically just a big folder on Google Drive where every single sister puts in all of their notes, study guides, past quiz answers for all of the classes that they took during their college career. At this point, now it's huge and it's such a good resource for you. Our sisters are from all types of majors. So a lot of these classes are gonna be covered in the study bank. And not only do we know all the easiest and best genetics to take, we also have the notes to give to you with it. Our academic chairs will always have study rooms reserved for us in the library, which is 
really helpful because the library actually gets really crowded and obviously studying with friends is way more fun you know we get to share snacks take study breaks together the next pillar is leadership from the moment you join you're gonna have the opportunity to pick up positions there are lots of leadership opportunities for you that you're gonna have a lot of creative liberties with so like for me i was publicity chair rush chair academic chair historian there's also a sisterhood chair performance chair asian awareness chair we also have a wellness chair there's a web manager there's a secretary there's lots of different positions that you can pick up after that you can even serve an exec so there's president vp internal vp external vp finance vp service and then vp new member educator which is like the mom even after that you can serve on the united Greek council which i highly highly encourage i got to serve as president my sophomore to junior year and it was the most impactful experiences of my life i learned so much about what it means to be a leader i got to meet so many people within our Greek community within all four of the different councils the staff here on campus and i also got to go to different conferences that i got to meet Greek people from around the world what's really cool about these positions is that whatever you do with it is completely up to you so you and whoever your co-chairs are have complete creative liberty when i was publicity chair i got to rebrand our entire sorority's online image when i was rush chair we got to choose the different themes how i want to do our shirts which events we want to do how we want to make the flyers if you're sisterhood chair you get to brainstorm the different events you want to do for sisterhood so we've done like brunch with mimosas we have a sisterhood wine bag races we also do sisterhood superlatives at the end of each year at the end of our semester we have a little holiday party we also do this thing where each sunday at chapter we'll write down something encouraging or some little note to each sister and at the end of the year we got to receive our notes in a little jar so whatever you want to do it's completely up to you and that's what's so fun about doing these positions and you get a lot of leadership experience as well and these are all things that you can put on your resume okay so the next pillar is service each organization is going to have some kind of philanthropy or basically a cause that they support for a our philanthropy is breast cancer awareness so this is a cause that we mainly focus on in the month of october because that's breast cancer awareness month so during that month we hold fundraisers every week at the beginning of the month we put pink flags on the quad to signify the start of breast cancer awareness month at the end we hold a charity banquet we sell shirts that have the word hope on them we sell pink ribbons and all of these things that we do is to raise money and raise awareness for breast cancer aside from that throughout the year we do lots of different other kinds of service events around the community so we've done like food drives park cleanups campus volunteering etc and then our last pillar is asian awareness so we like to host or co-host asian awareness events so that could mean in the past we've done like fan dancing we've done k-pop dancing we've done spring roll making we made dumplings we made asian lanterns we perform dances at asian events like asian tation asia fest task night market we volunteer at the ike for lunar new year so basically anything and everything that we do throughout the year is going to relate back to and be in support of those five pillars so being an AKD5 has helped me in immeasurable ways. I honestly could not have imagined going through college without being part of this organization. It just opened so many doors for me in every avenue in my life. I met my lifelong friends. I got so many leadership opportunities. I just learned a lot about life for my sisters and what it means to be a good friend. But most of all, it made me proud to be Asian for the first time in my life. And I just became so much more of a confident person to myself. I just feel so much more grounded in my identity and able to find happiness and feel grateful every day. It's always been my dream to move to California after graduation, but I actually changed my mind and decided to move to Chicago instead and stay in the area because that's how much these friendships that I made mean to me. I want to spend more time with my sisters who are here. I want to be able to visit campus from time to time and you know see my littles and see what the chapter is doing in the future. Okay, so basically overall, this is quite a video. This is a lot of information that I just spit out at you, but I do hope that it was helpful. If you have any more questions, you can ask me in the comments below or feel free to DM me. I answer everything. I'm very happy to answer your questions about anything you want. If you have more questions about Rush for a particular sorority, each sorority has a team of Rush chairs, which is normally around two to four people. And those are the people who can answer your questions that are specific to Rush or their particular sorority. And you can find out who these people are through the sorority social media usually. If you're interested in rushing for the semester of fall 2020, I'll leave in the description who our Rush chairs are for AKD5 and their contact info. And if you made it this far in the video please be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content as always now it's really really late and you're really really gonna go to bed so with that i wish you the best of luck with rush don't forget to be yourself explore your options and i hope you find your home away from home oh my god it's so hot today oh my gosh hi are you interested in rushing a sorority you should totally come to our rush event tonight